So how should you prepare for a digital marketing job interview? Daniel? First thing here is don't rely on the outline and the job description. Because first of all, it will say you need to know about X, Y, and Z. And invariably, there'll be a thousand other things that you'll need to know about as well, because there's so much interplay between digital marketing topics, you know, content, social media, search, user journey, they all overlap with one another as well. So I would always start by mapping out what it says that I should know about. And then I would try and use a tool like Coggle or something else then to go through and say, what are the related topics? How strong is my knowledge in those areas? What do I know about these things? What what do I need to improve my knowledge in? Um, but you can't cover everything, can you? No, that's the other thing as well, is that there's a lot of generalist digital marketers out there, but nobody knows everything. And you probably shouldn't try to claim to do that either because you're going to get caught out. So work out what your strength areas are um, as you go through this. And that will say, yes, I'm really good at this. And then you can say, well, I'm not an expert in that, but I'm, I'm, I'm good at learning. And actually that whole piece around your interest and curiosity is a really key one if i'm recruiting somebody curiosity is a really key thing do they want to learn about things are they open to learning new things as well i think that's really important so what are the best ways to go about demonstrating your knowledge um, i think one of them is that to do stuff so say say you haven't ever been in a job before where you've done this stuff in practice because that's often the the chicken and egg situation i want a digital marketing job but i've never done a digital marketing job is to go through and say right i've built a website using WordPress. I've blogged, I've recorded some audio podcasts, even if it's just examples of things. I've created some videos um, and so on as well. Um, and then you were talking about doing something kind of new and-, and Yeah, just try and learn something new. Um, I mean, I think there's certain things you can do that would be a feather in anybody's cap. You know, we talk a lot about GA4 on our yeah, podcast. Like and make yourself useful. Learning about the basics of GA4. There's all sorts of online courses and things you can do. And it requires quite a lot of dedication. But you know what? You need that feather in the cap that no one else going for that job has got. Um, and so I deliberately pick on something like that because most organisations are behind the curve on that. At the very least, you want to know what it is and why it's different. You know, don't just go in there and expect to blag it. Because actually, if they know a little bit more about you, yeah. you're sunk. Yeah. You, you really, really, really sunk. And I think the other thing I think is really important is, you know, be knowledgeable, but be humble as well. You know, and I've, I've made this mistake. I'm so desperate to impress the interviewee, I, I become a threat. They instantly, like, dislike you, if you like that. If you, if you, you might know a lot more about a particular subject. Be aware that, you know, very often they're interviewing for a job that they're the head of department of. So be respectful to what they're doing. You know, and I've made that mistake as well, like gone in like a ton of bricks on, well, this is rubbish and, and that's not very good. And that's, and you can see them just like, really don't like you. This is my life's work and you're just slating it. Yeah. So, you know, you need to be, I think it's about being knowledgeable, but being humble. Yeah. And actually, you know, you've got two ears and one mouth. You need to use them in the right, the right ratio. You need to ask questions. You need to listen. You need to show that you can listen. And you can actually, you can show the person interview. Actually, this is somebody really hungry to learn. And they, they ask really good questions and they understand and they reflect and they think before they open their mouth. You know, these are all things that I think a lot of people fall foul of. This, this is a general interview tip, not just a digital marketing one. But you know that bit when someone says, have you got any questions? And they go, no. no. <laughs> oh dear. Worst strategy ever. Yeah. So you need to prep some stuff, like yeah. pre prep some questions, yeah. write them down. No one minds. You go, I have actually, I made some notes. Yeah. So, oh, you prepared. That's yeah. brilliant. Okay. So I think, yeah, it's really important to do that. And then I think you mentioned something about um, doing an audit on their competitors. So th this is one to be really careful with. Yeah. Because if you, you can do some, you can do, there's all sorts of audits that you can do. But again, remember, you're sort of slating their baby and that's not going to mm. always indeed with them. But it's well worth, you know, looking at some of the spy tools. And there's some great free ones out there. The one thing I'd say about this is don't do this if you're not very confident in those areas. So, you know, you can use things like Ahrefs. I've got a brilliant SEO audit. Yep. But if you don't really understand SEO, I'd be really like, don't, don't, don't go there. Um, but you can use that to not just analyze how that company is operating, but analyze some of their obvious competitors. And it's just nice preparation work. Mm. It'll get you in the zone. And that... More often than not, doing that helps you to formulate some really smart questions that you might ask that, that, that are going to show, well, this person's really hungry for success because they've already worked out who our competitors are. They're already thinking around some of their weaknesses that could be leveraged on this. Is, this, is, this is great. And I think websites like SimilarWeb are amazing because actually 
we don't have access when we go for a job to the company's analytics systems. But actually, that will give you some nice benchmark data to go on in terms of like amount of traffic and what have you. Just be again, be careful because that is scraped. Uh, calculated data is not necessarily 100% accurate. Yeah, you need to know the limitations of the you tools do, that you're using, you so you need and, to know them and, enough and so that you often, don't make a point that's really out there. Yeah, yeah, so be humble with it. You know, say, like, I've looked at SimilarWeb and it looked to me like this is that, is that, is that true? Yeah, use it to yeah. shape a question. I think that's a exactly, great point. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's the way to do it. Don't come in with that as a definite because more often than not, that would be the one thing you're wrong and then just think you're a buffoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've done that. <laughs> and, a, and a final thought on that, I think, is that invariably there is a chance that somebody in the room is going to know more about you than a topic even you think you know the most yeah. about. So go in with that attitude of, I think this, what do you think? Yeah. And I think that's the thing that really is posing questions, opening a conversation. That's what makes a difference. They're trying to work out, do I want to work with this person? Right. And that's you know, really, that's that relationship. Would I want to go down the pub and have a chat with them? You know, that's what gets you the job, actually, in not cases. And I've, I've been on interview panels a, a lot in, in my career. And very often it's not the most knowledgeable person who gets the job. It's the person who we think we could work best with, who we could mould into the employee that we that we want. This is malleable. This there's, there's clay to work with there. It's great potential. And actually very often yeah. that might not be knowledge-based. That could just be your attitude. Well, it's not always a person who knows the most. It's a person who wants to learn. Totally. Yeah, totally. attitude and aptitude. Yeah. I think people are more recruiting for those things than prescribed qualifications and things like that yeah. now because... You can't say, I want somebody that's got 15 years experience in TikTok. <laughs> like, it hasn't existed for that long, so that's going to be a problem. So actually, increasingly, people are recruiting that way. So think about, what is your attitude? Mm. Is that a purposeful thing? And do you learn? Do you commit to learning? If you do those things, you'll do great.